I'm Athena Thompson, and this is the Good People Podcast. It's a tip of the cap, it's a pat on the back, it's a smile from ear to ear. They're the good people from around here. Yes, hello. Um, welcome back to another episode of the Good People Podcast. My name is Andy, and on this show, I get to talk to some of the best humans who are, have ever been invented. Uh, and today's no exception. Uh, today's guest is someone who you may not know because it's, it's a little bit of a treat, actually, because it's difficult to get this person uh, on the camera. Uh, a little bit behind uh, behind the scenes. Most of their great work is done behind the scenes and I'd like to welcome to the show Athena Thompson. Welcome. Thanks Andy yeah. for inviting me. Yeah, no, and uh, it's it's important that I bring you on because like I say, you do a lot of stuff behind the scenes that no one knows about but it's really important and it's great community activity and I really want to tell everyone. But I do have a question. Firstly, are you not, uh, do you not have the urge to get on camera because of um, your childhood experience with te- television? On Double Dare. No, no, well, I killed that. Well, totally won. Um, what my, my, my partner was uh, not too happy because I, I completely slimed him to the point that he had to change his clothes mid-competition. <laughs> what was the show called? Double Dare. Uh, Double Dare, yeah, yeah. For those who remember the show Double Dare, you got to slime people. What happened? It was like a... Um, I was like a, a quiz show and yeah. so they'd ask you different questions and then like if you couldn't answer it, you'd say dare and then they'd go double dare yeah and then they go physical challenge and that's oh, like yeah. when you do the the challenge part yep. yeah ah, well there you go so well hopefully it hasn't um uh, uh left you with too many bad uh experience because <laughs> i'm ha- i'm happy to have you on camera today i want to tell you a story um you would describe yourself probably as a uh problem solver i think would be one of the best ways you would describe it on a day-to-day basis it's pretty much what you would do, right? It's solving problems. Yeah, that. Um, actually, my my other thing I, I, I say that I do is I, 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 I drink a lot of coffee and I ask a lot of questions. Yeah, you certainly <laughs> do. And I think you never tell Athena your problems unless you want a heap of help. Is what <laughs> is my uh, motto because as soon as I, any time I've ever come to you, you've always thrown yourself in the ring and tried to help me sort it out. And I'm very appreciative, appreciative of um, all the help you've given me so far. So let's, what don't we, what don't we talk about first? Should we talk about your professional career or should we talk about the fun volunteer stuff? Which one, where should we go first? Oh. Why don't we talk about your career? Because there's some, there's some great stuff there. You have a, a bachelor of applied science in nuclear medicine. Yeah. Huh. So uh, I think most kids, when they get to year 12, like, I don't know what I want to do. You've already been told to do work experience and I had to try and make up my mind what to do. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go do two weeks at Peter Mac to learn more about radiation therapy. And so that helped guide me to actually go into that as a degree. That was your inspiration? Yeah, that was my inspiration. I'm like, I really enjoyed doing that. So whilst I didn't get into the radiation therapy, I went into nuclear medicine, but um, I'm like, there's science, there's, um, you know, you're helping people, but it was a really hands-on job too, as much as using your brain, like are you managing radiation and you're taking images. And so, yeah, I, um, that, that work experience, yeah. So the people then, working with them, yeah. And then um, did you go straight into your degree? Did, no gap year or anything? Just straight in? Straight I in. I mean, we didn't really have – gap year wasn't really a thing when we went to school. Not showing our age, hopefully, but – No. I mean, a few people would take – like I, I remember my time that people would take that year off and go overseas. Like people would do that. But um, no, uh, through, through uni, I was like always on the go. So I was working a few different jobs. I worked in an emergency call centre for the uh-huh. water – uh, Southeast Water back yep. in the day. Yep. Love that job. Met some fantastic people. So yep. if someone had an emergency, they would call the line and we'd have to yep. sort deal out with those problems. things. Yeah. And I, I worked as a flag person. So um, in rail. So if they're doing construction on the tracks, yep. um, 
whilst they kill the power, you've still got to have a person to have a lookout uh, to make sure a train doesn't come along. And, and crush everyone. Yeah. <laughs> and so um, that's when I, fe- I actually have worked with some pretty crazy material like radiation. And yeah. Had little explosives that you put on the track. So if the train oh, came past, yeah. you go bang, bang. Um, we hear those here. Just down, I hear them at night and yeah. quite often someone will comment on a Facebook group, what were those bangs? And someone will say mm. they're the explosive on the, yeah, on the, on tracks. the tracks. Yeah, yeah. I, never, I, I only found out about them in the last couple of years. And so the, if you heard bang, 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 yep. three, mm. it's because you're lined three up. Ah, ah there So you go. that like you've distanced it out so that you've got a bit of warning. You're like, oh, the train is coming, it's coming. Oh. But to be <laughs> honest, like in my entire time of working in, in that um, job, mm. yeah. And no one died. No. So job done. Job done. Yeah, well, so, there, there you go. Congratulations. Yeah. No deaths. Zero deaths uh, on the train line. Uh, you got your degree and then you sort of moved into, um, you're a nuclear technologist? Yeah, a nuclear medicine technologist. So, What does that mean for all the people like me who don't know what it, doesn't know what it means? So everyone knows what like an x-ray is, like yep. radi- radiography. Yep. So they shoot the x-rays at you. Mm-hmm. I would inject the radiation into you. Yep. So you tag the radiation onto some sort of pharmaceutical and you're looking dif- at different functions of the body. So like yep. I'm going to see how my heart's working or I want to see how the brain's working. Yep. Um, most people might have a know of having a bone scan. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So that's like the medicine side, the nuclear medicine is the, the compounds and things that you put in to so that can be seen on an X-ray. Yeah. So you've got to try and uh, you've got to... Uh, tag the radiation to the pharmaceutical so then you can uh, inject it into the person and you've got the imaging machine that goes, oh, that's where the x-rays are going yep. or, you know, the gamma radiation yep. and you can formulate your image on the, the screen. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. Yeah. Uh, it's really interesting science that um, you took that, so you as a technologist, but then you then went on to like train people how to oh. safely handle it. Yeah, so I, I mean, I used to used to joke that I'm like um, the people around me in the hospital were super like beautiful people. My, my my colleagues were just like very empathetic. Yeah, and um, if you go straight to the problem solving, I'm like, there's a problem, I got to solve it, and I'm like, I just didn't feel as, as as lovely as these people that were caring for the patients coming in. I just yeah. like, I just wanted to get the job done. Yeah, um, and so I felt like I needed to shift what I was doing. And so I went off to the Australian Nuclear Science Technology Organisation and worked in radiation safety. Mm -hmm. Um, My first taste of commercial type work uh, in delivering training courses. So across Australia, you you need to, um, if you work with radiation, you need different licences and different Uh states do different things. Yes. And so we were delivering these training so that people could get their accreditation. But really, it's so they could... Treat this material safely. Safely handle it. Yeah. So, if, like, uh, you might have seen in the news, like that uh, radiation gauge that the cesium source got lost. I did. I'm like, how is that even possible? I was going to say that wouldn't have happened how? under your watch. <laughs> uh, you're like, but how? So, yeah, um, I would have been uh, teaching, so, like, the radiation safety officer or the person who was using one of those gauges the things to look out for. Um, like if something did go wrong, just what do you in do? the compliance, and because there's a whole set of legislation that sits behind it. Uh, yep. Yeah, and uh, got to work with some phenomenally like super smart people that, uh, you know, from physicists um, to emergency responders to, um, yeah, some got to see some really interesting part of the world. Yeah, that job. for sure. And you know, and you didn't lose any radioactive material. No. So, uh, so um, where we ran the courses on site, mm. um, where my labs were for some old portables. And so we used to contaminate it with like tiny amounts of radiation so people could actually test out the gauge to see how it worked. Because you're like, when you come closer, you go... Yeah, yeah. And really... The Geiger counter, is that what it's called? Yeah. There you go. But right next to this set of portables that were right next to it, were these kangaroos. I don't, I don't think I've ever worked in a workplace where like, yes, we've got our own kangaroos by the side. Mm. So students would come, come walk around and I'm like, so, yeah, those are, they used to be the mice. <laughs> so oh. Like, oh. 
the kangaroos are on <laughs> radio. And also they provided some lighting at night time yeah, when I, you were yeah. trying to find your way around. <laughs> Yeah. But, you know, like making fun of those sort of uh, ideas about what radiation does and, yeah. Yeah. And so you've also said you said you had a couple of the best jobs. Um, you were saying you've got to travel the world with um, ANSTO and uh, the Uni of uh, New South Wales. Um, what's ANSTO for those who don't know? Uh, so the Australian Research Technology Organisation is where they have a research reactor. Mm. So there's some really uh, in- interesting types of instruments that come off the back of that yep. for people to do amazing science, whether it's measuring or looking into things at like tiny, tiny imaginable scales. Yep. But on the flip side, there's so much application to industry or um, for the fact that I worked in nuclear medicine, you're like, well, there's yep. this whole medical field as well. Yeah. Um, and so it's a place to, to do that. Yeah. And yeah. so that enabled you to travel the world. And uh, you also um, were moving into business development around technologies as well. Like, so your skill set enabled you to help identify places in which technologies could be used. So uh, to explain the shift from being in radiation safety and um, like consultancy, um, there were, I, I guess there was one thing uh, that was clear to me. Within uh, a year of working in that role, because it also involved selling, it wasn't just uh, delivering those courses, it doubled the revenue to the, that commercial unit Yeah. Um, by taking a couple of different approaches. And I'm like, I, you know. That, you could do this. I could, I could do this. Yep. And um, there was a... a I wasn't afraid to ask for help or try and find out the right person to, to connect. And so then I met someone within the business development unit. Like I, I yep. found them and they found me. And uh, they're like, why don't you come and work in my area? And that was a few years after. And I'm yep. like, I think I, I could do that. Yeah. And so, yeah, I worked in the business development area, which is, you know, a little bit different. So as a result of all these amazing research things, you have outcomes. Like people have got ideas and they want to implement yep. them into real life. It's like, yep. well, how do you do that? Yeah. How do you actually make that useful? So they might have a piece of technology that yeah. they know it's good, but mm. they're just sort of not quite sure how to how to get it out there. Yeah, and it, different, different skill sets as well. So uh, a researcher or uh, someone... Someone who's in the develop, like the development of the actual yeah, technology. the development of it, yeah, yeah. like or product development. There's you know different skill sets, so they're focused on that, and so they'll say, well, I think this could work, yeah. And so part of the job within that that area was to assess how it could, yeah, or uh, assess you know what other steps you might need to take to partner with people to develop it more, mm. or you know how much that might cost to do, yeah. or whether there's something out there already, or or, or how that all compared. Uh, yeah, right. So so you've helped and, and you worked at, like in business development for quite a while, a few different roles, a few different places. In mm-hmm. fact, I think from memory you told me you worked with basically the people who were in, uh, who made the best solar panels. What were... Oh, the grandfathers of yeah, solar. Yeah. Yeah, I was super lucky. Um, uh, one of the senior business development managers at the University of New South Wales took me un- under his wing and he was great it, as a result, I got to work in an industry that at that time was just bursting with uh, with energy around that industry. Around solar? Around solar yep. and renewables. Yep. And what year is this, around about? Oh, I'll put you on the spot. You have. Yeah. Somewhere when solar was getting LinkedIn exciting. Yeah, yeah. CV. Yeah, I can do that for you now while you're talking. <laughs> yeah. So, yep. It was just at the right point in time. And so you had this, uh, uh, I mean, solar was... the. the People I worked with had had uh, had had inventions from like 1980. Yep. And uh, the efficiency of solar cells and uh, were increasing, so it was becoming more economically viable. Yep. So everyone was like, "We we can do this," mm. and you could see it like uh, doubling each, each year the cost of yep. the materials coming the, in versus efficiencies and whatnot. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And uh, I I I don't think I really understood how important these uh, acad- like these these people were mm. until one of the first international conferences I went to and 
We turn up and it was massive. So many people. Yep. Thousands of people. And there were other uh, people were coming up to 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 these um, professors and saying, "Can I have my photo taken with you?" Yeah, right. So they were like superstars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, just uh, uh, um, an amazing time. And I guess uh, the what what they did was figure out a really efficient way to uh, manufacture the solar cells that sit in the modules, right? Sure. Make them efficient. They were known for making the most efficient sol- solar cell in, yep. in, in in research. Yeah, sure. And that, that's always the aim. Like how can we make it more efficient? What other types of technologies can we use? Yep. And their technology suite was like, how can we get industry to apply what we do here to make more efficient cells? And so it was about licensing that technology and collaborating with different groups. And because our... Uh, that all happens overseas, like in China or in Germany. The manufacturer. Yeah, the yep. manufacturer of, yep. of solar cells. Yep. Um, that meant that we were going overseas to meet, meet with sure. potential industry collaborators. Yeah, great. Yeah. So that was, would have been a pretty interesting time. I, was that around the same time that some – I feel like there was a girl who worked out how to make a solar cell out of a printer – uh, or no, something. Perhaps it was Alison. So she she is an amazing person uh, as well. She worked for Canon uh, looking at inkjet technology. Yeah. And so her idea was can we use the inkjet to produce com- parts for to create a super uh, efficient solar cell. And so, you know, when you look at the solar cell, Right, mm-hmm. it's mostly blue, and then you can see little lines through it. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So what these guys were doing was working out how to cut the grooves in and then fill them in with the the metal. And so there were different ways to do that. So there was one like with laser, and and Alison was uh, looking at how you might use an inkjet print inkjet printer to to do that. To yep. How do you put those metal uh, metal lines in? Yeah. So uh, not having come from a background of engineering, I had to quickly learn a lot about engineering to be able to understand what the academics were talking about yep. to then uh, understand, all right, do we need to put in things like a, a pattern in place? Yep. Uh, how does that fit with the market? Like is there the equipment there that already exists? And yep. uh, they were just the best team because they were practical, enthusiastic. Uh, yeah, it was just the right time to be around there. Yeah, and unfortunately one of those, uh, what you call the, the grandfathers, one of those um, fellows unfortunately has passed now, hasn't he? Yeah. 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 But, but there's a legacy. I think you were telling me that maybe their, their child or someone, their daughter. Oh, it? yeah, their daughter. Uh, also another Alison yeah, works in solar and so she was a PhD student at the time there so I got to work with, with oh, her cool. as well. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I mean the 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 students that came out of there and the PhD students that I saw that worked within there are doing some really fantastic things. Yeah, uh, I saw was it uh, Brett and another. Uh, I think oh, I think of him as a kid, but he's not a kid anymore. No, and he, he <laughs> made like one of the like major science awards in the last uh, just just recently too. Yeah, right. they won an, an award. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah, and. Uh, I'm like, oh, I feel, like I feel special to have uh, been able to work with such uh, intelligent, hardworking people yep. uh, that really care about the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A, a good place to be. Mm. Good people to be around. Mm. Uh, now, you've uh, what else? What I was going to say because you're talking. We're talking about technology. Um, you got into solar. You've then gone on to create a business. Um, oh, actually, no. What I do want to mention, this is pretty cool. Uh, at the Pause Fest in 2014, you were um, able to sit on the, uh, what would you call it? Like the. I was a, a moderator for a panel. A moderator yeah. for a panel yeah. at the Pause Fest. Now, what's Pause Fest for those who don't know? <sighs> it was. It's like a, com- a conference? No, it was, was it? it was more than just a conference. I think a conference would, wouldn't adequately describe uh-huh. that, right? Yeah. So. I, <sighs> Uh, a friend of mine, George, created a beautiful event uh, like 10 years ago in, in terms of saying, right, uh, like there's some really interesting stuff happening out there from a digital perspective and technology perspective. How can I bring people together to talk about it yeah. and connect with each other 
And so uh, I seem to find myself connecting with people that really care about the people. Yep. And so it w- wasn't like your typical uh, event that you feel kind of corporate and businessy. It was more about community and bringing people together to share ideas. And um, he, he uh, did really well to try and curate things people had never seen or heard before or sure. very fresh. Yep. And so uh, at that time back then for that panel, so, like that was all – this is really new mm. for those people. It, was, it looked like it was a, a, a pretty cool place to be. And there's some big names that were lurking around at that. I mean, you shared the um, the panel with the likes of like Melanie Perkins, the founder of Canva, um, and also, Mar- uh, sorry, um, uh, Rick Chen, who founded Possible. Yeah. Both very successful businesses. Um, that, that must have been a great sort of environment to be in. Um, oh, my God. That was... What, what year is that? That's it, 2014, it? yeah. It's like, it's almost like nine years ago. Yeah, yeah. I see. I know this because I've got the number written in yeah. front of me. But I, And so that 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 was at, at the very beginning when they were... Just just flourishing. Estab- yeah, yeah. Just, just really establishing themselves and, and hearing them, their story. I mean, they they were uh, quite... quite uh, they're already starting to show themselves as leaders. And yep. so to think, oh, now like it's 2023 and you, you look at where yeah. both those uh, founders are and where their businesses are, it just, I'm like, oh. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> like and you I'm see- meeting these like phenomenal people, I feel, yeah, quite unlucky. And I, when uh, the first time you told me about being there, you said that um, you remember having a, a discussion with um, Melanie Perkins just around women um, founders and funding and and what sort of things might come up at the... Oh, so I guess uh, if you're going to moderate a session and uh, facilitate a discussion and a conversation, you want to have a, a conversation with the people that are going to be on that panel beforehand. Yep. So yep. I got to have a, a little chat to each of them and said, Look, what yeah. are you presenting on? Like what, what questions uh, are you thinking might be asked? And I said, look, I... Given our current environment and what people are talking about uh, for for Melanie, I said, someone's going to ask you if you felt discriminated or uh, felt the gender inequality as being a, a female founder, a, a being a female fand, founder yep. in, a, a t- in a technology world, yep. in a technology startup. And so that, yeah. And so I think, oh, what, what's changed today? Yeah. Like, yeah. We're still, still. Still kind of pushing it, and we're still having these conversations. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. we're still having these conversations. Yeah, and it takes uh, you know, it's one thing to have a, a policy in place, but it, it takes some real thought about how you do business and choose to do business. Yeah, what do you have as a core value? Which kind of um, led to that uh, the f- uh, founding co-founding a business called Gem Maker, which worked in the sphere of commercialization. So same same type of thing doing at the university, like yep. evaluate, work out how to connect it and get it out to the world and then yep. uh, help them through that process, but running a business to, to, to do that. To do that. Yeah. And that was, the, that was Gem Maker, that was your business. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, but going back to that idea of uh, equality and how do you... How do you reduce the inequity? Mm-hmm. Well, you've got to start with how you do business yourself. Yep. And so it's really understanding what some of the, the needs were. Yeah. Uh, having that flexibility. Yeah. What happens when you've been out of work for a period of time and you want to go back? Like a, like a mum uh, raising yeah. children. Yeah. 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 And to be honest, it's not always uh, just, uh, it's not always mums, yep. but it's also being able to provide those conditions. For men too. Yep. Because if you don't, then they can't take on those same types of roles yeah. at home as well. Yep. So. Well, I feel like you. Um, so you, you over time you're sort of developing this lifting people sort of attitude. You know, like helping people, um, helping them find the best ways to do what they've got to do. Problem solving, mm-hmm. strategy, business development, all these sort of things. Now, you have a couple of children. You mentioned that during your what during your pregnancy of your first child, you somehow managed, or no, oh, after they were born, you were saying born, yeah. after they were born, you somehow managed in between one hour sleep, 
and uh, all of the things that come with being a new mum to draw up a business plan for a new business, family business, um, called Tech Lever, which is where we're at now. Maybe you want to tell us what Tech Lever does and then we can uh, we can t- sort of draw the lines between where we're going today and, and the volunteering and things that you've done. So we help really clever people access fund Australian government funding. Yep. The short of it. Yep. So, and that's through uh, the research development tax incentive. And that's to help people who, so they've, they create, they, they want to go and do research and development on technologies and on. No. So most people, most businesses are doing research and development, right? Yep. Sometimes they don't necessarily know it. Maybe they've not termed it in the same way that the government has yep. coming from a science background. You like, Oh, yep. I know what an experiment is and, you know, most people, I guess, learn in high school, you've got a hypothesis and then you've yep. got the materials and then you've got these, like, this is the, this is what we're going to do as part of the experiment and here's the results. So uh, uh, there are a lot of businesses that are doing product development and some of that would be deemed R&D. Yep. There's a legislation definition that, that falls for it. And so... The types of businesses we we've worked with are from like people who make video games. Yep. Because there's actually some really clever science that happens yeah, behind. Yeah. Uh, of course. You know how do you make people move in a certain way? Yep. Or like how's that rendering? Yep. Um, to people who make electric motorbikes. Oh, and um, uh, the other one which I'm like, oh, it's amazing, 3D printing for uh, carbon. Bicycles. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's really cool. Um, that obviously, again, you're working with businesses to try and try and help them find the best way to do things, and and your problem solving again. Which coming back to your slogan of you know drinking a lot of coffee, asking a lot of questions, problem solver by day, all of these sort of things. Uh, <laughs> My Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's right. So you know, um, I. I like where that's going, but this is also, of course, the professional side of what you do. And we didn't meet on a professional level. Um, we met um, in other ways. And you have a uh, another side, which is your uh, urge and propensity to want to also help people in a non... Um, I'll say it's not for, for business, it's for people. So you volunteer. Um, you volunteered extensively in a lot of things. So... Um, firstly, the one that I know the most about, um, the West Side of Newspaper, the community newspaper in in inner west of Melbourne. Um, you have basically in that environment rolled up your sleeves and done a, a bit of everything, right? A bit of article writing, you've done photography, the social media. Um, what sort of made you want to get involved in a community newspaper? Uh, so... I like taking photos. I feel a bit unpracticed. Yeah. I was lucky a few years ago, a friend of mine uh, knew someone that worked for Canon and so it enabled me to uh, access some uh, uh, workshops to attend and to really get an eye for it. But that was like over 10 years ago. Yeah. And, you know, just had baby, like babies and I'm like, oh... I like like I like the uh, being creative and publishing, right? Yeah. So, um, how, where to put images? I really kind of enjoyed some of the marketing aspects because you're like, oh, where should this go? Yeah. How should this look? How do you want it to present? And so, I like just like the, the fiddling with that. So, I think I'd seen that the West Sider had put out they needed a support with layout, and so that's why I actually first contacted. But layout meant that you needed to be in the office. Yep. Oh, kids juggle, what can I do? Mm. We actually need some support with social media. Yep. How do you feel about doing managing the Instagram? I'm like, yeah. Yeah, totally. I could give it a shot. Give yeah. it a shot. Yep. And uh, again, I feel like I'm just always in the right time and the right place. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because that was what, November, November 2019, maybe? Mm hmm. So, you know, jump like a couple of months later and yep. we hit like the pandemic and we were all locked at home. Yeah. 
And so, so you started just before the pandemic. I'd, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, three, three or four months. And so, uh, it was great to meet Derek, the editor, uh, like freedom to, to take it in the direction, you know, that you wanted to give it. Yeah. Yeah. Give it. Yeah. And there was some really good solid foundation by the previous person that had built yeah. the, the engagement. Mm. And so it was easy to look at what they, they'd started and yeah, yeah. to continue to carry that. Yeah. And I guess the reason why I feel lucky is because whilst I stuck at home, yeah. the Westside actually provided a, a platform to, to meet a whole yeah. different type of people. Yeah. And a lot of good people and as well. a lot well. of good people yeah. through doing that. And I, I got to see a lot of the inner West that I don't think I would have been exposed to otherwise. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so you certainly worked very hard. Uh, I've seen firsthand um, the amount of work you did and you helped a lot to grow a lot of the aspects of the paper. Um, the other thing that you do that is also focused on, I guess, local and people is um, you created a Facebook group called Inner West uh, Women's Hub, uh, which has now grown to, you know, it's got thousands of members. Um, you're one of the... Uh, administrator moderators on the page and anyone who's admin a Facebook page knows that it's a heap of work and you're trying to keep people, you know, being friendly and nice and, oh, and no. how do you find that? No, I, I, I don't have to try and keep people friendly. It's like a, a quite a, 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 a beautiful group of people. So I, uh, we, I pulled that together with two other women, one that I knew from, um, my my baby's group. Oh uh, yeah, mother's group. The other one I didn't know. I just I noticed that there was a lot of uh, discussion, and I I thought, well, maybe you're aligned. Yeah, maybe we're yeah. aligned. So I I said, hey God, hey hey Ange, and hey Chrissy. I know you don't know me, but I think we could make a new group, and we and and uh, the whole point of its being was to be able to support local businesses, know where to find stuff. Uh, as well as support women in business. And so his first name was actually Inner West Mama's Hub. Mm. We're like, well, not everyone's a mama. Not everyone's a mama. Not everyone's a mama. Let's change it. Change it to, to, yeah. to, to women. And so we took a lot of time to sit down about the culture we wanted to set, yep. about how we want people to talk to each other how we want people to post in that group. Uh, and so a lot of thought and time and effort went into thinking about setting that up. And I think as a result of all that set up around how and tone and what's, what's, what's okay and what's not, this community just flourished. Like it, it, it ends up attracting like-minded people because of that. Yep. And essentially, so you sort of build a good culture in the... Yeah. Yeah, yeah and just... I think there's something kind of unique about this area too. About the inner west, yeah. Yeah, about the inner I west. I agree. It's the the willingness to support others. It's a very strong yeah. community, isn't it? Yeah, very, very much so. Absolutely demonstrated through COVID. Yeah. Uh, I was. I'm still, and I'll say it every day of the week. I was amazed at just how community minded everyone became, especially in a couple of, based on these Facebook groups, because that's where you see a lot of the action. But mm -hmm. I, uh, I will remember it forever. Just the, all of the community interaction that started happening because of the pandemic. So, you know, a positive spin off of, <laughs> of a, of a pandemic is that, but um, yeah, I like how everyone came together and started helping each other. Mm. It also, uh, put pressure on other things. So groups like the Mama's Hub, uh, sorry, the Inner West Women's Hub were great because it enabled women to sort of interact. They could buy from each other, sell to each other. Is that kind of the premise of the page as well? Like that you can... Yeah. So if, and also like how can, I, I need help with something. Can you, can you help me? Or do you know someone who can build a website? Uh, do you yep. uh, know a graphic designer or I need to go... Uh, buy presents for an eight-year-old, like just anything and everything, um, but also providing a place to actually 
tell people about what you do and hear their story behind it. And I I, my, my favourite posts are the ones where people tell you a little bit about them and why they're doing what they do. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you've run lots – there's like lots of um, – do you have like a someone of the month, like a professional of the month? Oh, yeah, we were doing that. We did that for, for, for a while. So one of the things we started was – Oh, there's so many great brains around. Yeah. And looked at a way, how can we share what they know yeah. for people to, to use? And it used to be just a business thread and I thought, no, we've got these great people, let's share their brains. And so they do be an expert of the month and they, each week they do a post on an area that they were an expert in. And so I have got to meet so many other yeah. like, pretty awesome people Uh like Jules and Suzanne and yeah, uh, yep. Jess and yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, people with like great brains around different topics to to share that. Uh, I think there's a book in that. That's, yeah, uh, that's one up my sleeve for a, for another day. Yeah, and but you might have to create a new page because, of course, I'm um, sort of trying to look over the fence, not being uh, in a worse. Ah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> not, no, not the uh, not the the <laughs> the quiet gender. Yeah, I've, I don't have the. The right, I'm not uh, in the right category to get in, but it's a it's a vibrant group, and a lot of good things have come out of it. Um, and you've been doing that. How long ago did you start that? Oh, I don't know. What time? What, when does it say it was created in the group? Oh, I can't remember. I haven't had a look. But I mean, you've got thousands it was a few of members. Years so it's, ago. Yes, years yeah, ago. Yeah, it was but before. Um, yeah, was it 29, 28, 29, I think 2018. Yeah, and it's just sort of grown from there. Yeah. Yeah, fantastic. And now other exciting things. Uh, again, you do a lot, you help a lot of people that will never know about and you're always putting your hand up and you're always, like I say, don't tell us any of your problems unless you want a heap of help. And, <laughs> and there's a lot of people who've been on the receiving end of your skills, knowledge, and basically your, um, I don't know, drive to help people out. And that's been recognised. It really makes me happy to say that at this point, you uh, have been nominated for Citizen of the Year. Uh, how's that feel? Um, Is that embarrassing or do you like know. it? What do you think? I don't know. I'm looking forward to like going to the event and yeah. seeing like all the other all people. All the good people, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the good people. I, I look <laughs> yeah. at the list of the... The people that were there last year, like Rodney, and, yeah, yeah, uh, you know, with his uh, creation of the the you know the bike shed, and yeah. which became the Inner West Bike Hub, yep. you know, another great organisation. Yeah. To Jules, Brooke, uh, and what she's doing to lift women, and then you've got like Sheridan from Mama's West, from Mama's West, yeah, yeah, they'll all be there. They're so all going to be there. I know it's going to be a great time. Yeah. yeah. Um. So. Uh, and Belle, oh. On our roller skates. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. I, I, yeah. So, I, a big congrats to you because it's nice. And like I say, you're a bit of an unsung hero because you are always in the background um, and you're always doing things for others and you're not sort of doing it for the, high, for the for, you know, to get your face seen. You're doing it just because you have a natural urge to help. And I have to say, and a big, like on behalf of me personally, a big thank you so much because you have been... Uh, a great sounding board for me for the last few years now, really, um, on lots of things that I've been working on, plus things that we're working on together, which is the second half of what we're going to talk about today. We've got an exciting new project that we've been able to launch. Um, but yeah, so I guess like, thank you so much for your help um, for me, um, because um, I know that you are an excellent listener and you'd have to be because you've put up with my waffle for the last you know, last few years. Uh, and I'm very thankful for all, all of the um, hard work that you've done and all this, the effort and time you've spent on things for me and for another Good News and for the local community. So thank you so much for that. Oh, look, you're welcome. And obviously it's paid off because congratulations on uh, your nomination. <laughs> yeah, oh, well, I'll be at the party. I'll be at the party. Uh you know, I, I look forward to it. It's always a good event. I've, I've been nominated once before uh, for for another good news, and it was really good. It was a really touching experience. In fact, that year, uh, the citizen of the year with the um, the couple that have been looking after the, a park down the road for about eighty years. I can't remember how many years it is. It's a long, long time, and they've been curating and building up this park, and they were well deserved recipients. 
Oh, I um, love some of the things that they, they do there. Yeah. The, the, the setting up like these wonderlands for the kids. Oh, yeah. yeah. They did some phenomenal stuff over COVID. Yeah. And we, we got beaten in that year. Uh, the person who won the award, um, looking at their list of achievements and things that they do, they're practically a saint. Like oh, I couldn't argue with the, with the win. <laughs> I thought, yeah, well. And that's what I say, like just the people that are at that event, uh, they're all good people. It's such a nice thing to... Yeah, it's not a nice thing to go to. G'day, it's Andy here from In Other Good News and I hope you're enjoying today's episode of the Good People Podcast. Do you know back in 2020, we created Grindhog Day, our very own line of coffee beans that supports the amazing charity Food Bank. Every single purchase of Grindhog Day coffee puts food on the table for vulnerable Australians. But we knew that we couldn't just create any old coffee. We had to create something that would rival the best that is out there. So we've got a blend from Colombia, Brazil, and Papua New Guinea, and it's something that I think is purely magical. But you don't have to take my word for it. Why don't we ask these couple of geezers? How's your coffee, Sonny? Delicious. I can really taste the premium beans. Such a generous aftertaste. Are you old enough to drink coffee? I have a moustache, don't I? Mm. Since we launched Grindhog Day Coffee back in 2020, we have created over 35,000 meals through the food bank system. So if you want to do something good just by drinking good coffee, head to iogn.com.au and order yours today. We've got free and fast delivery for those who live in the inner west of Melbourne, plus we ship Australia wide. And if you love it, we've got a subscription. So your coffee will turn up on time, every time, and you'll never run out. Amazing. Head to iogn.com.au and order yours today. Now, let's get back to the episode. So I'm sitting here in the In Other Good News uh, studios and I'm sitting with Athena Thompson from Tech Lever and we have something pretty fun to announce. We've been working on something for a while and I'm, I'm excited because it's something I've wanted to do for a long time and as it turns out, so have you. Uh, Athena, we've got something to announce. What is it? What is this initiative that Tech Lever and Another Good News have finally got to launch this year in 2023 and we're super excited about? Ground level. Ground level. Ground level. Level. <laughs> level. Level. Ground level. Ground level is? A business club. Yeah. But really, it's a club for people who do business. It's a club for the people. That care about community. Yep. Care about supporting each other. Yep. 100%. And so uh, we independently have had the idea of connecting um, small business owners or operators together. Um, independently, we've had this idea for a long time. Um, when did you first think of it? When I saw what was happening with the Inner West Women's Hub mm -hmm. and I was thinking... A lot of the time, because one of the other parts of work that I do is around grants mm -hmm. and grant application. How, how can you access extra funding to build what you do? And so a lot of the time you get to hear about problems that businesses have as a result of that. Like you, yep. you need funding and so, but what do you need it for? Yep. Uh, so I recognize that a lot of the dialogue that was happening on in the group to have a, a point of place to make. But uh, the idea, going back to that other thing around gender equality and yep. how do you do it, well, you don't do it by isolating yourself from people. You've yep. got to bring people together. Yep. And so for a long time, I was just sitting work, trying to work out how, how, what sort of, what would a club look like if you were to bring businesses together so they could help each other? Because yep. everyone has that different expertise. Like, yep. like as I know from the, my, uh, that we have these resident experts, 
And so it came from a very place of like, well, how, how, we, how can I bring those people to, together? Yep. Yeah, what would that look like? Yeah, a club. So a club that brings people together. And I had the same, do you know, I was during the second and well, first and second lockdowns, mm-hmm. I was spending a lot of time broadcasting good news stories, but I'd also had the thought that there's going to be a lot of people in isolation at home. We saw this on the news, right? We saw people in isolation, people um, not being able to get out, not being able to go to work like they normally would. And a lot of these things impact your mental health, right? Um, especially if you run a business, you've got to make decisions every day that are supposed to be uh, positive decisions for your business. But um, that becomes a lot harder with if you're not in a good frame of mind. And in when we started selling coffee beans, I was doing coffee deliveries to people's doorsteps during um, starting in the second lockdown. Uh, and I would find that I would spend 20 minutes on every doorstep just about delivering coffee because people would come out and they just wanted to talk to someone and they just wanted to and are connected with a lot of people who are small business owners who are working on their own in the house and they had no one to talk to about business or decisions or the rapidly changing COVID uh, regulations and things around and then even right through vaccinations and all that sort of stuff. They just didn't have someone else to talk to. And so it was almost coffee and counselling. And that for me was like, well, I need to start somehow getting these people together that are this in you know peer to peer people so that they can they can have these peer to peer level conversations about the stuff they're going through because often in in business your your partner probably may not understand what you do your family and friends they might not understand what you do especially if you're an entrepreneur like no one knows what you do so uh, so you know like to make uh, to make their life and normalize the bad situation these people should have the opportunity to get together. And so that was when I started put something together. And then we got introduced oh, through Jackie. Jackie Burton and of Rudy Nudy Designs. So Jackie was a, a member of the Inner West Women's Hub. Your women's in the Hub. Group. But also I'd met her through writing an article about what she does for the West Sider. And she said, oh, you've got to meet this guy. He's on the same wavelength, I think. So I met you. Mm. And I'm like, yeah, he's uh, he's strange, just like me. <laughs> he's going 100 miles an hour. He's got all these lovely ideas. He's strange. Uh, you know, like a little bit quirky. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, think about things a little bit differently. Yeah. So we 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 met all these businesses, and uh, we found out that a lot of the problems were that they just literally didn't have people to talk to about their situation like it was that they were isolated in it so that they weren't able to it, they weren't able to normalize the situation because they were stuck in their own environment and not interacting with a heap of other people so it felt like for them it was pr- really heavy when it was sort of heavy for everyone mm. and realizing this we said well let's let's sort of help them bring that back together. So we started, a, we did a pilot program mm. um, where we had online get togethers, didn't we? So yeah. um, just over Zoom and that was just discussion about what's going on. So we thought, well, we need a bit of an agenda and a format. What's going to be in that format? Mm. And do you remember the, the things that we decided with the things that probably just to help people get it out? That is basic is get people together. Get people together. Work it out. And we're going to keep bringing initiatives like this, little initiatives just to keep adding on as we go to make the make ground level something that is really just a just a fun thing to be involved in almost lifestyle, I, I would say. Like it's it's a lifestyle brand. Oh <gasps> uh, yeah, I'm like when you say stuff like that, I'm like, like I, I would like bring out the spirit level again. Um, but you know, introducing basic yeah. introducing basic things into your life like a bit of exercise and the stuff that you know makes a difference. Yeah. Uh, it's a good change to make, especially coming down, coming out of hopefully a awful period for people for the last few years. Um, and I feel like that's our mission, right? Is to. Yeah. Give, care for the soul. Give, yeah. Care for the, you know, for the person. Yeah. yeah. Mind it. Athena, I am uh, looking forward to what we can do with this. Uh, 
And I'm really glad that in other good news and tech lever have been able to combine forces to make this happen. Uh, I think it's a great initiative. We're getting great feedback so far, so we're onward and upward. Uh, ground level, get on board. Otherwise, thank you so much for coming and chatting today. We've had a good chat. And um, yeah, I look forward to probably having you back again at some point so we can report back to people and tell them how it's gone. But otherwise, you know, thanks for coming on and it's great to see you. And this is the Good People Podcast. Thank you, Andy. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> It's a tip of the cap, it's a pat on the back, it's a smile from ear to ear. They're the good people from round here. They're the good people from round here. Come on, let me introduce you to a few. Mm.